Piranha 3D is the type of movie where I can't quite figure out if it actually exists, or if it was just a teenage, hormone-filled fever dream with over-the-top violence, plenty of nudity, and outrageous acting that I watched like 12 years ago. So you can believe my shock when one day it popped back into my mind, I googled it, and there it was. The movie that has everything a man could ever want. Brutal violence, nudity, and Christopher Lloyd. The movie begins with someone fishing at a Mesolithic dig site. And yes, I did have to Google what Mesolithic meant. We can't all be super handsome geniuses like you. It's a time period associated with the middle of the Stone Age, so almost as old as your mum. And I'm no fisherman, but surely wouldn't having your beers clanging together beneath the water scare away the fish from you? Because my grandfather would always tell me to shut the hell up when fishing. On second thought, maybe he just didn't like me very much. An open bottle, looking like something straight out of a PS2 game's cutscene, falls to the bottom of the lake, seconds before the ground begins to violently shake, creating an opening that an ancient race of beer-hating piranhas come shooting out of. The man falls into the water as a whirlpool begins to form and is swarmed by a school of piranhas, before they school him in the art of having all of your flesh forcibly removed. We then see that it's the beginning of spring break at Lake Victoria as people flock to dance, drink, and wear very little clothing. And we all know how the piranhas feel about drinking. They're not so fussed about the little clothing though. They'll eat you either way, they don't discriminate. We're then introduced to one of the main characters, Jake, as he bumps into one of the side characters, Kelly, who he's quite clearly got a thing for, before her boyfriend's friend proceeds to throw a drink all over him because obnoxious jock character do obnoxious jock thing. Jake then goes to pick his little sister up and is offered a job from a sleazy filmmaker named Derek, who for some reason hangs out around little kids. Derek wants Jake, a local, to help location scout for him and his quote, wild wild girl, Danny, as the pair are looking to to create the Citizen Kane of Wild Wild Movies, whatever that means. Jake accepts, but the problem is, his mother is the local sheriff and she wants him to babysit his younger siblings so she can go around shouting at half-naked drunk people in the lake. And later on, the sheriff and Deputy Fallon discover the fisherman who went for a danger swim's boat with no fisherman in sight. That is, until the sheriff falls into the water and receives a rather unwanted cuddle from a mangled corpse trying to get all up in her business. They pull the body from the water and the sheriff is contemplating closing the lake, but the deputy advises against it as this is one of the biggest financial weeks for the town. Hmm, sounds an awful lot like another subaquatic sea dwelling people eating movie, except with a lot more nudity and really bad 2010s dance music. Things are beginning to escalate around the lake as we see a lone cliff diver jump in before he's suddenly attacked by something and pulled beneath the water, leaving a mess behind that looks as if somebody decided to go for a swim but didn't realise that their cycle had suddenly started. Jake, not wanting to miss an opportunity to make some money and look at some scantily clad women, decides to neglect his younger siblings, pay them $60 to keep their mouths shut, and leaves them alone at the house to potentially burn it all down. Well, whatever it is kids do these days. Scientists have arrived at the area, Novak, Paula and Sam, to investigate the recent seismic activity in the lake, and are lucky enough to, for some reason, receive a personal escort out there by the sheriff, because I guess you never really do know when pirates could attack. Jake's younger siblings, Zane and Laura, conning Jake out of 60 bucks, decide to immediately defy their brother and break their promise, as they get into a little boat to head to an island to fish, which is definitely a great idea when the schools of prehistoric people eating fish roaming around out there. I hear they like kids best, and immediately find themselves stranded there, as one of the little ankle biters somehow forgot to tie up the boat properly, and they're forced to stand there and watch it drift out into the people-eating piranha-infested waters. Laura decides to stand in the water and attempt to flag down some passing boats, but fails to realise what's currently in those waters. Naked people, and glass apparently, because she stands directly onto a piece that slices open her foot, causing her to have an incredibly close encounter of the third kind with a rather hungry child-hating piranha. Oh, and then it has a Deadpool moment as it breaks the fourth wall by looking at the camera. Don't ask me what that's about. At this point, Kelly has joined Jake and they've both boarded the boat with Derek, and he's filming the models Danny and Crystal swim naked beneath the boat, when suddenly Jake's mother calls him and he desperately tries to act like a normal human being and not the awkward 17-year-old kid staring at two naked chicks that he definitely is. The scientists discover an underground lake that's now been connected with another passageway due to the quake, and if the channel has taught us anything, it's don't go into creepy unexplored passageways. The last thing we want is subaquatic descent creatures. Sam and Paula dive down into the underground lake, and when they enter the passageway, they discover rows upon rows of fish eggs. 
Fish eggs that like to do front flips, apparently. The cast of Finding Nemo rebel against their humanoid overlords, and something suddenly bites Sam's hand as he's surrounded by darkness. He lights a flare to discover that it's not darkness that he's surrounded by, but apparently really patient piranhas. Like, this is the only time throughout the whole movie that they've actually waited to attack someone. The line connecting Sam and Paula breaks, and as she hears the distorted screams of a man currently being eaten alive by little fishies over the radio, Novak realises that something isn't quite right, so dives in after his friends. He finds Paula as she's currently being ravaged by a bunch of really angry goldfish. Um, uh, ma'am, I think you dropped something. Novak and the sheriff pull Paula from the lake to discover that she's been turned into a side of jerky Paula. And back on the party boat, Derek convinces Kelly to do body shots from Crystal on camera, despite it already being made known that she's underage. So not only does he make sleazy movies for cash, he makes sleazy illegal movies with minors in for cash and documents himself doing it for the whole world to see. The only wild wild thing about this is the sheer amount of wild wild stupidity emanating from the man. And just as it's Jake's turn to do a body shot from Kelly, someone he clearly likes and cares quite strongly about, she pukes overboard because, ooh. Jake, you're gross. The sheriff and Novak take a fish that was pulled from the water with Paula to Mr. Goodman, the resident fish lover, and he tells them that this type of piranha has been extinct for well over two million years at this point. So he theorizes that the only way that they could have possibly survived down there for so long is if they've been fighting each other. So a constant cycle of mating, giving birth, and being eaten by said birthed thing. Sounds like a Saturday night down the average Welsh pub. While filming Naked Parasailers, because Jake's somehow now been promoted to cameraman for some reason, zooming in on all of the details of the woman, Jake spots his siblings stranded on the island, before we then see the parasailer enter the water, and then leave with a non-consensual leg shortening procedure. Back with the majority of spring break goers, Eli Roths decided to take a break from filming his usual over-the-top death flicks to act as an over-the-top wet t-shirt party host in a place that's, uh, surrounded by wetness. With the sheriff knowing about the piranhas, she sends the police to attempt to shut down the party, with them even going as far as to fire off shots into the sky, because screw the sky. And in response to the cops showing up, and quite literally discharging a weapon into the air, everybody decides that it'd be an absolutely great idea to jump into the water for a bit of fun. And by a bit of fun, I mean a bit of death, and by a bit of death, I mean a lot of death. Man, I hope the practical effects team got paid good for this movie. Jake picks up Zane and Laura from the island, after threatening to tell his mum on Derek. Kind of a good thing his mum happens to be the sheriff. But the boat gets caught on some debris in the process, which causes the increasingly drunk, high and belligerent Derek to grab Jake around the throat and blame him for what's going wrong. And we then see the piranhas arrive at the party fashionably late and begin their rampage by quite literally eating someone's ass. But not like that, you dirty-minded heathen. Panic erupts, and people begin climbing the scaffolding to the soundstage, with the not-so-lucky ones being torn to shreds as their limbs are being eaten away from their bodies. And this lady has the misfortune of having her terribly CGI eyeballs pulled away from her skull. With the amount of stress now placed on the scaffolding, it begins to tip and sends people tumbling right back into the red food-coloured water, in the process giving someone a final destination to your death as a wire snaps from the stage and whips into a topless woman causing her to become, well, topless. Armed with a shotgun, Novak jumps on a speedboat to go shoot some water, and Eli Roth's character is killed as a boat collides with his head, removing it in the process. And after the apparently hungry sheriff whips up some nice fried fish with her taser, we see hordes of severely injured people all lining the boats in the area. As Todd, Kelly's boyfriend, who I'd entirely forgotten had even existed at this point, floors a boat towards the shore and wipes out at least a dozen people in the process before it comes to a stop after the propellers are caught in a woman's hair and Todd takes a little too much off the top and rips her face entirely off. Derek manages to break the boat free, but proceeds to almost immediately crash it into some nearby rocks, because of course he does, which causes it to start to sink as it shatters the bottom window in the process and the boat begins to take on water which is kind of the opposite of what a boat should be doing, really. Derek, Crystal, and his cameraman are sent flying into the water, and Crystal is attacked by this group of clearly misogynistic fish as they go right for her, blatantly ignoring Derek in the process. Crystal is trapped underwater as we see them enter through her stomach and exit through her mouth, which isn't how you eat food, Crystal. Using a paddle, Danny pulls Derek from the water before proceeding to immediately hit Derek with said paddle, as multiple piranhas are currently eating his clearly already very much eaten legs, as Derek cries about them eating his little Derek. And after seeing Crystal's breast implants floating away from her corpse, because that's the type of movie we're watching right now, one of the piranhas burps up Derek's manhood while looking at the camera, 
because I guess we're watching a comedy movie now. Back at the spring break party, countless people are being pulled from the water in various different stages of This Really Hurts, with this lady having a bright future as a magician's assistant as she turns into two ladies. As countless people are desperately trying to escape the lake, but are struggling on account of the whole being eaten alive thing, Deputy Fallon removes an engine from a boat and uses the propellers to propel countless fish to their deaths. He holds his ground and creates the world's largest tuna smoothie until eventually succumbing to their attacks and falling into the water. On the boat with Jake and the kids, Kelly is trapped below deck as the water is rising, so Jake calls his mum to inform her of the situation, so she proceeds to American Ninja Warrior herself to a nearby boat, before taking off with Novak, as this random guy she's literally just met apparently cares an awful lot about this random lady's kids. To save her boat from being caught in the rocks too, she throws a line of rope to Jake so she can climb across to help. Once she gets across, everyone but Jake begins climbing the rope back to the boat, when all of a sudden, the piranhas begin leaping from the water and grabbing onto Danny's hair. Eventually, they make their way up to her face and begin tearing her apart until she can't hold on anymore. Moral of the story, don't have hair. With Jake still on the boat and still needing to somehow get to Kelly, he picks up Derek's fleshy sticky corpse and throws him overboard as a nice tasty human sized distraction. With one side of the rope tied to him and the other to the sheriff's boat, he swims under the water to get to Kelly. Once he gets to her, he opens the valve on the gas tanks, gives Kelly a nice big kiss and after he's done picking her bits of sick out of his mouth, they enter the water and light a flare to blow up the boat. The sheriff's boat won't start though, leaving Jake and Kelly stranded next to a school of people eating fish and a boat that's about to explode. When suddenly it starts, and they're pulled away from the boat seconds before it explodes, killing all of the nearby fish. And as they're both saved from the impending doom of being blown to pieces while simultaneously being eaten to pieces, Mr. Goodman calls over the radio to tell them that these piranhas have no mature reproduction organs. They're babies. And there's nothing worse than babies. And then the movie suddenly comes to an end, with a giant piranha jumping from the water and taking Novak overboard. And I'm left with my question from the beginning of the video being answered. This movie did indeed exist, while simultaneously serving as a hormone filled fever dream with over the top violence, plenty of nudity, and outrageous acting. In other words, an absolute masterpiece. Before we finish, I just want to let you guys know that I'm launching my YouTube membership program, which will basically give you some perks like custom emojis to use on videos, and serve as a nice little way to support the channel if you're into that kind of thing. And while on the subject of supporting the channel, I just want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons, the people who every month help keep this kind of thing going, because we all know how YouTube can be with it. So that being said, a big thank you to Dom, Hunters263, Rebecca Pitts, A Dandy in Space, Martin Brannan, Natasha Twyman, Jared C. Bees, Pascal Mathis, Richard McGowan III, Macy J, Chris, Dennis, Wade Knott, Ashley L. Wintz, Christopher Butsky, Joshua Torres, Remy, Fire Goes Fast, Josh Brooks, Dyreem, Robert Zerweck, Dark Shiva, Josh Hannon, Billy Whitaker, Lon Eve, Jay Slows, Daniel Dickinson, Donnie Dewerk, and G Source. So once again, a big thank you to all of my patrons, and thank you to everybody else for watching.